crash. Pilots are all up in the air over the latest chow time scuttlebutt. You know, there's nothing like old-fashioned fried chicken. You better enjoy yourself, Buster. It's later and you know what. All right, what do you mean? All I know is what I read in the Daily Bulletin. Hmm? So? Rumor has it the Army's gonna run the food out of things for all the services. Oh, sure they are. It's what I hear. You know, nothing's too good for our boys. Relax, buddy. Just remember, the food you save may be your own. The inter-service grapevine spans the oceans, reaching the remotest corners of the fleet. The way I hear it, that the Army's going to take over the chow end of things for all the services. Sure they are. <laughs> so, what else is new? Boy, I gotta hand it to you. You sure do come up with the greatest. <laughs> oh, say, uh, Al, you wanna pass the bread there, please? And among land lovers, mealtime talk takes on a clinical tone. Be satisfied. Be at home. And don't start any rumors about our chow. Rumors? All I said was it would not be too long before the principles of residual atomic radiation by means of ionization and employing these useful little gamma rays... All right, I know, I know, enough. Some other time, Professor. Remember, <laughs> after Chow, we're gonna take a little trip to the moon, and then we're gonna... Oh, Henry, Henry, progress is gonna pass you right by. It's all very simple. Henry has his trouble. But this time, the professor's right. Actually, big things are happening to your chow. In just a few years, you'll be eating steak dinners like this in a foxhole, or a turkey dinner as in-flight chow, and with all the trimmings, or roast chicken at the bottom of the ocean. You will, because today, the power of the atom is being enlisted to kill disease-carrying bacteria in food that cause it to spoil without refrigeration. It all began at the Atomic Energy Commission. Scientists there knew that atomic radiation could keep food from spoiling because it could kill the bacteria that spoil food. The Department of Defense turned over the job to the Quartermaster Corps, which feeds the American Army. Tests were begun at many universities, uh, like those at the University of Michigan. Chickens were fed irradiated food to determine whether nutritional vitamins, fats, starches, or other food elements had been destroyed. These tests proved that there were absolutely no harmful effects to the chickens. Animals had passed the tests, and the next and most important test was scheduled. At the QM Diet Kitchen in Chicago, irradiated foods were prepared for human consumption and then given to members of a volunteer tasting panel to decide whether prepared irradiated foods were tasty to humans as well as being harmless to animals. Actually, the laboratory proved that irradiating food by means of atomic ionization is like taking an X-ray of it, that's all. None of the dangerous particles of the atom are used. Most of the gamma rays pass right through the food. That way, no residual radiation remains in the food itself. Further proof of the safety of food irradiation is shown here by a simple comparison. Let's see what happens when a Geiger counter is applied to the radium dial of a watch. Way up past 20, hot. Now look what happens when the Geiger counter is applied to some irradiated food cans. Nothing, absolutely safe. From the labs and the test panels, the next step was demonstration at a Pentagon luncheon given by Wilbur M. Brucker, Secretary of the Army, for congressmen, other high government officials, and members of the press. 
On the menu were foods sterilized by irradiation. Research and laboratory testing show that some foods need only be pasteurized. That is, exposed to small doses of radiation. Then they can be stored in 40 degree temperature for much longer than at the present time without irradiation. The ultimate aim will be to try to completely sterilize many foods so that they can be stored for indefinite periods of time at only room temperatures and thus avoid any need for refrigeration. Eventually, these unrefrigerated, irradiated foods will be used to feed submariners in the Navy, like those of the nuclear-powered Nautilus, so that they can travel submerged around the world without being forced to come up for resupply of food. The Air Force's jet bombers will be able to fly in 5,000-mile jaunts and keep up crew morale by serving such meals as beef swirls, date nut bread, and hot chili. And right after they hit the beaches, to increase their morale, the Marines will be fed tasty, pre-prepared meals, like roast pork applesauce and baked potatoes. And the Army will be getting hot turkey not only for Christmas, but the whole year round. Many irradiated foods are available now, and the coming years may well see a revolutionary change in our food processing systems and eating habits as a nation. Because the government followed through on its plans of atoms for peace, members of the armed forces of the United States, and the civilian world as well, may soon benefit from this exciting new concept Food preservation by nuclear and electronic irradiation. And that's why the professor's information on improving chow in all the services isn't just a lot of lip flap or scuttlebutt rumor. Pardon me, fellas. I'm making a food survey. May I ask you a question? How do you like those hamburgers you're eating? I'm from the quartermaster, checking on the quality of some of the food made especially for this meal. Especially? Uh, what do you mean, sir? You know, those hamburgers you were eating were preserved by atomic radiation, stored on the shelf, unrefrigerated, for more than six months. Thanks, fellas.